on, everybody? We're back with a brand new episode of Terrence and Mike, the Sleeping Giants podcast presented to you by Double E TV. What's going on, Mike? How much, man? What's good? Not much, man. We're back with a brand new week and recording this on Christmas Day. So I want to wish Merry Christmas to everybody. And obviously we got 2022 coming up. So I know everybody traditionally makes all these resolutions, but for people who like on the grind, they're already trying to position themselves to be better. But what are your thoughts, man, that we are almost about to step into a brand new year? Well, I mean, uh, you know, it's been a very interesting year. At times it felt like it was going by real slow. At times it felt like it went by pretty fast. Uh, it's been a great mu- uh, year for music, in my personal opinion. Yeah. And uh, and also, you know, television and film, you know. Right. Uh, things are starting to open back up a lot more, you know. Even though we are still having some issues with the pandemic, you know. The, it's, it opened up a little bit more. And, you know, we'll see what happens in 2022. But things seem to be looking up right now. At okay. least, you know, music and sports and, and television and film. So, you know, it looks like a lot of more interesting stuff to come in the near future. Uh, two questions to piggyback on what you just mentioned. Uh, you had messaged me about a week ago that you was going to see the Spider-Man movie. You never told me your thoughts on it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, uh, we're not a movie uh, spoiler right. review uh, podcast, so I won't give any spoilers, but I thought it was good. Uh, definitely one of the best Spider-Man films I've seen. Uh, definitely one of the best Marvel films I've seen. So mm-hmm. I enjoy it. Cool, cool. Well, what about The Matrix? Are you interested in checking that out? Yeah, I'll probably check that out either later tonight. Um, I haven't heard the greatest of reviews, but, you know, we'll see. Everybody, you know, has their own opinion, so we'll see. All right, cool, cool. All right, man. So we're back with brand new uh, hip hop news. So this week we got Big Sean sitting down with uh, Drink Champ. So what were your thoughts of the interview? Uh, what kind of stood out from it? Well, I mean, uh, you know, he just talked about a lot of his career. You know, a lot of the stuff was obvious. Uh, he addressed the things that Kanye said when he was on there. And uh, I didn't know that Nori and... Uh, and Big Sean had previously had a, uh, I don't want to call it beef, but let's just call it a misunderstanding mm-hmm. over maybe a record or something that Nori wanted him to jump on and it never ended up happening. So, you know, you just got to learn a lot more about Sean, about the way he thinks and, you know, some of the business ventures that he's got going on. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was a good interview, very interesting. Uh, didn't get quite the numbers that I expected, considering I figured, you know, it would be pretty much known that he would be addressing the whole Kanye thing. But, uh, you know, I haven't checked it in the last day or so, so I could uh, check it again later and, you know, it could, the numbers could be better. But uh, still, you know, I thought it was a good interview all in all. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the part when he was uh, talking about his albums and kind of like where he was during that particular time when – those projects came out and he kind of distinguished what was a project versus what was a mixtape and kind of ranked those albums and where he was at and his um, evolution and also talked about some things he was uh, trying to do in the city of Detroit. And I found it interesting. He talked about like within the city, there wasn't even like a, a movie theater and what he was trying to do with his and some other business things. So yeah, I thought it was a good interview and, definitely show that you know sean has a a big head you know just a big thought process of how he approaches things and you know it's one of my uh probably first times kind of getting into his brain and kind of seeing how he views things so it it was a good interview yeah i enjoyed it yeah uh next up man we got alicia keys uh do she does an interview as well on the drink champs what were your thoughts about that yeah i enjoyed that one too uh Probably my favorite part was seeing Alicia Keys smoke. <laughs> Would have yeah. never thought that coming. But, uh, you know, she delved into uh, her musical past. Uh, it was very interesting to hear that she was such a big fan of the Wu-Tang Clan. I love that. And just uh, the fact that she's a much bigger hip-hop fan than I think a lot of people would realize, despite, you know, the fact that 
her music does seem to have a very heavy influ- uh, influence from hip hop. Yeah. But um, she talked about that, you know, some of the things in her personal life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, Nori's always going to ask, you know, the the difficult or the controversial questions. So did she even spoke on uh, the incident with Swizz and Drake and, you know, how that whole thing from her perspective played out. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was a really good uh, interview. And, and she also uh, promoted the new album that she has out and talked about that a little bit. And that was yeah. dope, too. So, yeah, I thought it was dope. And I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I'll, I'll preface my comments to the room that she was in on Clubhouse because, you know, that kind of piggybacks on to our next topic. But some comments that she said in there about how her son Egypt, how he's playing the piano and how he took it up at the age of four. And uh, also her and him collaborating on music and basically just kind of addressing that it was fun for them to to do it. And uh, in this clubhouse room that we're going to talk about as well, that ties into everything on the Drink Champs interview, Jay-Z was in that particular room. He talked about uh, when Blue Ivy did her song, that it was like a freestyle off the top of her dome. She picked up the headphones and did it, but both of them kind of addressed that they just want their kids to have fun. And Jay Jay Z talked about how he didn't even want his nephews doing rap because he knew that they were going to get more scrutiny and be looked at more and examined more with a fine uh, fine comb because of who who he is. So you know, it was interesting just hearing their thoughts about the children. Uh, you know, doing this, but also Jay addressed that Blue Ivy had been around them since she was like two months, two months old, as far as like traveling on tour. So this is all she knows as well. So if it's something that their kids get into, that, you know, they've always been around it. Uh, so I found it interesting, but Nori was also in that room. He said that Alicia uh drank and also that she was like the only interview that he's ever had that she didn't call back for edits so a lot of the men would come on and they'd get to pop in the the drinks and start talking too much and then their people will reach out a couple of days later and want this edited and take this out and take that out and he said alicia was the only person that he's interviewed with no edits so i thought that was pretty dope yeah i mean she seems very down to earth very uh secure in who she is yeah. and i mean i think it exudes not only through her personality but through her music as well right. so like you said i just thought the whole interview was dope yeah yeah so that same room that we were talking about in the clubhouse you know jay-z talked about verses and they you know they asked him about verses and he said nobody could stand on that stage with him for two hours so that definitely has got the internet buzzing because my time feed was just full of people bringing up people who they think could be on the stage with them. And, and people was just going, saying all kinds of random names and stuff like that. But what were your thoughts about that and seeing people's reaction to it? I mean, you know, I feel the same way I felt when Kanye said some of the things that he said when he was on Dream Camp. I feel like once you achieve that level of success or status or whatnot, then you know, anything you say is going to become a headline. Mm. And I think those type of people are cognizant of the things that they say. And they realize that, you know, when they say certain things, that they're going to become headlines. Mm. I think Jay knew what he was doing. Mm. And uh, I really think this was Jay's way of saying, like, I can, like, versus is, we can't, you know, mm. this is not the venue for me. Like, this is not something... Like, Jay is so big, he could do his own verses of him versus him, you know? Like, it's, and that's not, you know, to not versus or the platform or anything like that. Mm. I just feel like certain artists are just on a, on a certain level. Mm. And that all of this is based off of how we as the fans look at them. Mm. It's, a lot of it's based off popularity, record sales, mm. uh, notoriety, all of these different things. But, uh, you know, as far as the general statement, uh, I didn't have no problem with it. Do I agree with it 100%? Not necessarily. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it would be difficult for a lot of people to stand on the stage with Jay-Z and go 20 songs. 
And I do think a lot of the people that the internet thinks could stand up there with Jay would get washed, to be for real, for real. But, you know, it just that's just my personal opinion. Uh, now, do I think Jay is untouchable or nobody can beat him? No, nobody's untouchable. You know, and it's 20 songs. So, you know, it's all of the, we've talked about this before. That comes down to song placement, your mashup, mm. all of these things. So, right. you know, but I didn't have no problem with the statement. What do mm. you think? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a big statement to make. I mean, yeah, his cachet of who he is, of course, like he's huge and. But here's the thing, though. It's like playing basketball or something. Anything could happen. You know, AD get, gets hurt or whatever. Now you got to carry the whole team. So it's like, and we've seen legends get up there and struggle and have their moments where they're not sharp or whatever. So you have an off night or you're not bringing it, and then somebody else has their song placement where it needs to be. They got their energy. So, you know, that's the one thing I do enjoy about versus it can go either way. Sometimes we may think, okay, this person's got these hits or whatever. Like probably Nelly, I would argue, probably has more record sales than Ludacris, but most people felt like Nelly got washed. You know what I'm saying? So it's like people can have like the big hits or whatever, but if you don't like play some right or another person has a stronger performance or it connects better, it can kind of go differently. And another example of that was, I think Neo went up against somebody and Neo had all these big records and Jay-Z talked about that. And the person he went up against, it really kind of went differently than people thought, you know what I'm saying? So that's the thing I enjoy about verses that sometimes you really can't call it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, for me, I, I thought Nas would be obviously a, a honorable opponent. I've seen some people talk about LL Cool J and we'll talk about somebody else later on in, in the show. But yeah, I mean, you know, people make statements. And of course, like you said, it definitely is for, you know, headlines. It gets people talking. It keeps verses in the um, algorithm. So it's, it's brilliant to, to say these statements for sure. Right. Yeah. All right, man. Next up, bro, we got Freddie Gibbs and Jim Jones, man. What's up with these two guys, man? Oh, uh, okay. Well, uh, Freddie, just in general, you know, we spoke on Freddie multiple times on the pod before. I think yeah. Freddie's an incredible lyricist. Oh, yeah. Uh, my favorite, you know, in the game right now, just when it comes to cadences and just rapping ability. Uh, and Jim Jones, I want to say, you know, um, Jim. I was not the uh, biggest Jim Jones fan, you know, during Dipset's, like, heyday. And um, I, I felt like other members were, you know, stronger, just artists and rappers than him. But uh, he had his songs here and there. But what I do give Jim Jones credit for is I feel like over the past 10 years, he has severely improved not only his ability as a rapper, but it just shows that he cares about his craft. Like, you know, a lot of guys would still be trying to ride the wave of, you know, what they did 10, 15 years ago. Dude mm -hmm. is constantly, you know, pushing his thing. Every time I hear a Jim Jones record, I, I see the improvement. So shout out to both of them just for doing what they do in the game. But uh, as far as the story goes, uh, so... And I don't want to get too deep into this because this is not my lifestyle. I don't want to pretend like I know anything that I don't. So I'm just going to stick with the basic uh, public information and give y'all that. So Freddie Gibbs and Jim Jones have uh, had some back and forth before, uh, some on the internet. And uh, basically what this is over is uh, Freddie Gibbs is a uh, vice lord. And Jim Jones has a group or I, I'm not sure if it's a group or a clothing line, some kind of uh, imprint that is associated with him called Vampire Life. And considering that those two start with uh, the letters V and the letter L, I guess there was some misunderstanding between the two about what exactly that meant. Now, at um, Prime 112, which is a club in Miami, uh, an altercation went down. It's not 100% sure that uh, 
that Jim Jones was there. Some people say he was, some people say he wasn't. And uh, apparently the altercation was over statements about whether or not uh, Jim Jones was real, a real vice lord or whatever, and some things that Freddie Gibbs has said in the past. And yeah, that's pretty much the story. Uh, you know, anything, and there's more information out there. You can check that out if you want, but yeah. that's pretty much the story. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I know uh, Mano's got some stuff going on. And, and bro, you know, a lot of these, um, I don't know where that, uh, you know, like you said, that derived from, from that particular incident. But, bro, you know, a lot of drama these days, a lot of this stuff is kind of stemming from, like, clubhouse conversations and, these rooms get heated and real spicy. And then next thing you know, the sticks coming out or, or whatever. And I don't know, some two guys was arguing. I think one guy was saying that he wasn't from, uh, from Brooklyn. He's from somewhere else. And I don't know, man, it's, it's definitely, um, I don't know if everything is just real and some of the stuff is just kind of for cap and to keep people uh, talking and keep people within the algorithm or, or it's real smoke. But I did hear, you know, like, fists you know hands got exchanged and i think some people were saying that it's not that freddie got beat up but jim's people kind of held him down and then jim got on top of my I, I don't know i mean it's uh definitely for freddie i just want to hear good music i don't want to hear you know all the you know drama and stuff like that but i get it you know everybody is a man and they got you know, egos and, and reps up whole or whatever, but I just appreciate what both of them do from a music standpoint. And hopefully um, if it was fist thrown or whatever, we just kind of keep it at that. And whoever won, won, we shake hands and, and move and live for uh, another day and no additional stuff has to happen. Yeah, man. And uh, that's the difficult thing about this internet age. You know, people may forget things, but the internet don't forget nothing. Right. So, so if you said something or you did a video or a post or something and you said yeah. something, even you can delete your post, you know, but they'll still find it yeah. or somebody will screenshot it or whatever. So, yeah. you know, you just got to be mindful of, of what you say. And I, in my opinion, I just feel like people got to really pick and choose their battles. You know, is yeah. this really worth, you know, right. me taking things to, to an extreme level or an extreme measure? Right. So, yeah, I heard uh, Ice T one time kind of mention that. I think a DJ was trying to ask him some, uh, told him somebody had said something about him, and come to find out it wasn't even true. So a lot of times people just like to kind of stir up the pot and get you to respond, and the artist didn't even say that, or something is taken like out of context, or people chopping up little clips and stuff like that. And you know that's why sometimes athletes don't even want to talk to some of these journalists and people post game and stuff like that, because they know they're going to chop up certain sound bites and not even play the whole thing within its proper context. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So next up, man, what's up with Megan the stallion and Tory lanes update us on that. Okay. Uh, so, you know, by now everybody's aware of the story of the incident that happened. This was a little over a year ago now. Um, so, I don't think I have to really give a detailed description or rundown of that. Um, what I will say is, uh, you know, this story is getting more and more, uh, I can't really think of any other word, but uh, dirty and messy every day. You know, it's just, it's getting messier and messier the more and more that, you know, we talk about it. But uh, just in general, for those who aren't aware, um, so there was a preliminary uh, hearing about the entire situation between Megan, uh, Tory Lane, and the friend, and uh, Tory security guard. And um, there were some things that were revealed in this preliminary hearing. Um, one of the things was that there was residue on Kelsey's hand, Kelsey being the friend to Megan Thee Stallion, who was in the car that night. Uh, there was also a uh, Two different witnesses. One witness uh, reported hearing Tory say, dance, bitch, dance, as he began to fire shots out of the car. And uh, 
and a story or in a um description that sounds very uh reminiscent of uh that scene from Harlem Night. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, it, that's the way it just uh sounds when I heard it. Or so you know, and that's just my own interpretation. Mm-hmm. But uh there was also a statement uh from another witness, this is a different witness now, that said that uh the flash, the muzzle flash from the gun appeared to be closer to Kelsey than it was to Tori. So it seems like we have, you know, some conflicting uh, information in the story, a lot of stuff that's still unclear. But uh, one thing that I found very, very interesting is uh, Tori's attorney said that the detective on the case, Detective Stogner, admitted that the bullet, bullet fragments that were allegedly removed from Megan's foot can't be located. And that's the first time I've ever really heard anything like that in a case like this. And I think that not only is that very interesting, but uh, I think that that needs to be looked into. But obviously, uh, the preliminary hearing was basically uh, decided that there will be an actual case. The case will start in January and uh, we'll see what happens from there. But I I know there's been a lot of things said on both sides. uh, you know, I know when this uh, thing first started, Megan, you know, was taking the position of uh, saying that she didn't want to call the police or tell anything about the situation because of the social the situation uh, socially with police and black people and mm-hmm. being fearful, you know, for Tory situation. And, and and we all, you know, I think especially black men, you know, commended her for that, you know, because that would, that's having the presence of mind to think, you know, this could go way worse than what it already is. But, uh, you know, now, like I said, we'll see exactly how uh, this whole thing plays out. I know Megan did a live shortly after that whole thing Mm. uh, where she did say that Tori shot her. And uh, I know there were even diss tracks that were exchanged back and forth between Megan and the Kelsey girl and different things were said on the track. Tori has said some things in some of his music. So there's a lot going on in the situation. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Let me ask you a question. This is just a, um, just playing devil's advocate. Like I said, I, it don't matter. I mean, I just want what's best for both of them. So I don't really, I'm not taking nobody's side or whatever, but okay. What if it comes out that Tory is found innocent? So what does that kind of do for Megan? And what does that kind of do for him, in your opinion? Uh, I think that's a great question. Um, Honestly, you know, Megan is so big, especially at this point, even if it came out that uh, Tory was innocent, I don't think it would have that huge of an effect on her career. I think, you know, maybe some of the... uh, some of her male fans might, you know, be turned off by that. And even some of her female friends or fans might be turned off by that. But, uh, I mean, honestly, we still don't even know the logistics of the situation. Like, right. you, if Megan was outside of the car when this whole situation happened and the shot came from in the car, it's very easy, uh, easily that she could have been mistaken and just assumed that Tori shot her mm. because of what happened. But, the problem that I do have with that is if it was an assumption, I, I feel like it should have been said, I assume, or I think, as opposed to, I, I th- or he did, mm. or I know he did, or whatever mm. the case was, what, as whatever was said. But um, as far as Tory, you know, I mean, as you see, he's been putting out a lot of music this mm. year. Right. Like a lot, a large part of that is because of, everything that he has going on with this case. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, I honestly don't know if his career will ever be, I, I don't know if this is, you know, even if he's exonerated, I don't know that his career will ever be able to be back on the same level that it was as a result of this. And, uh, you know, it's, yeah. I, you know, yeah, almost the most- like he had to take the humble approach. Like even if he was exonerated, you know, you can't come out with no you lying bitch type of record or something like that. You know what I'm saying? 
I mean, I think the truth is the most important thing in this case. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, I don't wish anything bad on Megan Kelsey, right. Tory Lanez, the security guard, right, anything right. like that. But what I will say in closing is if if it's true that Tory was shot the gun at her saying dance bitch and what was like I said, kind of like uh, what I visualize a similar to the Harlem Night scene. Mm-hmm. If that's what he did and his intentions were to scare her or whatever the case, then that was very dumb on his part. Mm. And, you know, wow. just not the, not the smartest move if that's what happened. If not, if not then, you know, then yeah. obviously that doesn't matter. But once yeah. again, there's different witness accounts. Mm-hmm. So we don't know what exactly happened. One last question about it. Were there any talks? Uh, were, they, were they intoxicated? Was there drugs involved? Yeah, uh, Megan was definitely intoxicated. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Tori and a friend were intoxicated as well. They were at a uh, pool party in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what I hear, Kylie Jenner was at the party. It hasn't been confirmed whether or not they were at Kylie's house. And, um, you know... I would lean towards thinking that they probably were simply because if you read the early stories, they never wanted to clearly identify what the house, where the house it was. And, you know, this is Hollywood. So something like that goes down, you know, that type of information is not hard to obtain. Mm. So I think it was definitely on multiple levels an attempt to keep this on the hush, so to speak. Yeah. Especially if this was anywhere near uh, Calabasas. <laughs> like I'm showing up, trying to keep that on the low. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Um, last but not least, man, for our hip-hop news, RFP to Draco the Ruler. Not that familiar with his music. Uh, I do know he did a song with Drake. I do know that Drake made an uh, Instagram post about it. And I do know that this happened at a very big concert that was taking place in L.A. and a lot of artists didn't get a chance to perform, but I don't know how many rappers who have died this year, but I can probably think of four in the last couple of weeks. So what were your thoughts about this? I mean, it's the same every time, man. It's a tragedy. It's unfortunate, you know. And one thing I don't think a lot of people think about in these situations is, uh, you know, the fact that these guys, you know, represent, well, I don't even want to say represent. These guys take care of and provide for so many people. And when something like this happens, you know, that's like a whole bunch of people who whose lives are affected. Not only, you know, family, different people whose lives are affected by this. So, you know, like I said, it's a tragedy. Uh, and I hate that this is something that we have to keep talking about on this podcast, honestly. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, this is a part of hip hop, though, and this is a hip hop podcast. Right. So, you know, rest in peace to Drake or the Ruler. As you said, I'm not very familiar with his music as well. I've heard a few songs, though, like you said, the Drake song and a couple of others. But, uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's unfortunate anytime somebody's going to do something that they love, or yeah. even in this case, like his job, you know, his job mm-hmm. is to go and entertain and perform and mm-hmm. you know he's out here trying to do his job and and something like this happens so yeah you know uh rest in peace to drake or the ruler uh our condolences to his family and uh the people whose lives that the people that he was close to and whose right. lives he had an impact on and right. you know yeah i just want to make one comment too because i know a lot of times it's easy for people to say, oh, you know, these rappers, that's what happens. Uh, you're putting out that type of energy, blah, blah, blah. But, bro, I mean, you know how many NFL players have passed away in the last couple of weeks? So it's like it's not just for music. You know what I'm saying? It's like every industry. There's actors dying. There's football players dying. There's you know, NBA players dying. So it's not just hip-hop in general. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, and and this is all, you know, while there's a a pandemic going on. So Mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that's going on just in general, you know. But we got to do better, man. We really got to do better hip-hop because, you know, 
is just too too many times too often. And I know that this is, as I said, I know that, you know, things happen, you know, but we got to do better hip hop as a whole. Yeah. All right, man. So we got album reviews. So we got a good week, man. A very good week. So I'll let you start it off. What were your thoughts on Styles P and Havoc? I mean, you talked about this uh, almost a month ago as far as uh, announcing that the album was coming out. But Wreckage Manor, what were your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I really uh, enjoyed it. Uh, Styles did some great rapping. Havoc had some great uh, verses as well. I love the production. Yeah. I thought there were some really golden tracks on this uh, project as far as the just production and the whole vibe that they created. Uh, highlights for me are Move How We Wanna, mm -hmm. Pay Me In Cash, Y.O. The QB, Fuck Around, Good As Gold. That uh, beat is incredible. Uh, I love that track. The production on that was just spectacular. Shout out to Havoc for that. Mm -hmm. um, him to Him was very dope as well. I really yep. enjoyed that one. Yep. and uh nightmares to dream so yeah i really enjoyed this project man you took every song of mine i have written now <laughs> but yeah I, I concur man uh incredible project um it's just great to see those two guys collaborate it was probably something on their bucket list to to do together but it was a great project definitely check it out wreckage manor styles p and have it hey. all right man next up we got tiara whack R&B EP, we've already covered her rap EP and pop EP, but I, I enjoyed this one also. This one might, might be my favorite. I thought she did a great job. Her singing, um, man, bro, the song Heaven, it almost reminded me of, um, God, I don't know if that's, um, it's some Kanye album. It might have been the Ye album or something, but her vocals almost sounded kind of similar. Uh, but I thought it was incredible. You know, she did a great job. I like Heaven uh, and Cutting Onions. Those two records really stood out to me. But Tara Wack is dope, man. She's proven that she can rap, sing. Uh, hell, she may even have a country EP come out eventually. You know what I'm saying? Like, she can kind of do anything. So shout out to her. A rock, hey, a rock EP. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, like you said, a uh, country, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, she can do a little bit of everything. Um, I enjoyed heaven though, uh, kind of you know, a uh, somber type track, you know, kind of talking about people that uh, aren't here anymore. Cutting onions is brilliant. Like, geez, that track is brilliant. Yeah. And like, what's so interesting about her to me is she makes it look and sound so easy. Mm -hmm. Like that's the craziest thing. She makes it look and sound so easy. Yeah. And it's not. I can tell you for a fact. What she does is not easy. Right. Uh, Sorry was incredible as well. Yeah. So yeah, I, I like I like the entire EP. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Shout out to her, man. Tierra Wax is definitely uh incredible. And that heaven, man. I'm telling you, bro. That that DA album. It's the song where Nikki at the end, like, did something on Kanye's answer machine or something like that. You get a chance, check that out, and let me know if that sounds kind of similar to you. Okay. All right. All right, man. Next up, we got Polo G, Hall of Fame. I got a chance to check out the Hall of Fame and Hall of Fame 2.0. I enjoy Hall of Fame so much. Uh, I went and went ahead and listened to the 2.0 as well when I was at the gym. Uh, yeah, man, I, I, I enjoyed this project a lot more than, than I thought I would. Not that um, I have anything against him. I, I just wasn't that familiar with some of his music, but I actually enjoyed the project, man. It was really good. Uh, standout tracks for me would be uh, Painting Pictures, uh, Rap Star, that's obviously on the radio, Game Game with Lil Wayne, man, Lil Wayne snapped, uh, Black Hearted, Heart of a Giant featuring Rod Wave, uh, Party Life featuring the Baby, uh, Clueless with Pop Smoke and Fabio. And bro, Fabio, he's been snapping on like his features lately. Like he's really been going off. Fabio Fire, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Batman, Don't Play, featuring the baby. This is on the 2.0. Uh, 
Uh, oh, oh, and that Batman is a Michael Jackson sample. So that that was an incredible. Uh, start up again with M- Money Back Yo with you and Pardon Ways. But yeah, man, I, I really enjoyed the project. Uh, Polo G, uh, he's got bars, man. And if you listen to his music and be like, if you really listen to what he's saying, I mean, I mean you talked about K Reno. I said K Reno's album really made me think a lot. Polo G is deep, man. He's got some really deep bars. If, if you listen to what he's saying, it's real deep. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, he he's done some tracks that I've heard in the past that's really put him on my radar and um, kind of established him as one of those guys of this kind of new crop or, or newer crop of, of young guys coming up to mm-hmm. pay attention to. Um, for me, the uh, highlights on this one are No Return featuring the kid Leroy and Lil Dirk. Uh, I really enjoy Epidemic, uh, Gang Gang featuring Lil Wayne, yep. Black Hearted, as you said, Heart of a Giant, as you said, uh, Party Life, Fame and Riches with uh, I think Roddy Rich was on that. Yeah, was fun to me. I really enjoyed that. Uh, Clueless, as you said, with Pop Smoke. And Bloody Canvas, I thought, was really dope as well. So, yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed this project as well. Lot, a lot to uh, to like about this. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure, man. He's definitely got bars, and everybody should check it out. Uh, next up, man, we got Wiz Khalifa. Uh, your friend had told you it was no skips, and I told you uh, last week I got a chance to hear it already. Incredible, man. Incredible. I'll let you start it off, though. Yeah, Wiz all got wings. Uh, man, fire, bro. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Yeah. Like, uh, and, you know, um, shout out to my boy CB. He was the one who, uh, who wrote on Facebook and said that, uh, the new Wiz was fire and people need to check it out. So shout out to my boy CB. Yeah. Um, I concur with his statement. I concur with what you just said about, uh, no skills. I mean, I really enjoyed the whole album, uh, and it did give you that kind of old Wiz feel. Like, mm-hmm. Wiz, what, I think the thing that I appreciated the most about Wiz was that he's never trying to be anybody else or do what anybody else is doing. Exactly. He's got his own face. He does that, and that's his thing. If you like it, cool. If you don't, that's cool, too. Right. So, um, for me, Can't Stay Sober, Crazy, uh, Purple Fantasy, Dumb Fire, mm-hmm. Shop Around is dope as well. A uh, solid goal. I love that song as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Uh, two songs for TV is is Wiz and Currency. You you already know what. <laughs> yeah. Um, no better featuring Larry June is is almost at that same point. Like you know, Larry June, you know what he does if you know about Larry June. So it's mm-hmm. almost you know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And the Kid Frankie part too. Yep. So, uh, yeah, the majority of this project, I really enjoyed it. Like it's like you said, no skip. I thought yeah. it was fire. Yeah, Larry June, man, he's getting busy. Like he's on everybody's stuff. So shout out to him. But yeah, I like uh, Player of the Year, as, as you said, Purple Fantasy, Solid Gold, More Than Ever. Uh, I like Black Tarantino, Wiz Got Weens, The Kid, Frankie Part Two. Yeah, it's an incredible project, and I've said this several times. Wiz is always of this new tier of rappers. It's always been one of my favorites because I like how he's just kind of, he keeps it simple. He's not trying to lyrical miracle you. He does him. And just his whole persona, like a rock star type dude. And I've always enjoyed Wiz. I like um, I like most of his projects, man. He's done a great job and he's got a nice catalog. I, I, I like Wiz Khalifa a lot. Yeah, Wiz is definitely his own vibe, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. And Currency, man, he's definitely making a, a, a nice name for himself as well. Hey, I'm a big I'm a big Currency fan, hey. Yeah, yeah. All right, man, next up, man, we got Dr. Dre you know, with the uh, Grand Theft Auto contract EP. Uh, I was definitely excited to see Dre back in the lab, and Dre's been – just busy lately with everything he's been through with the aneurysm and then obviously going through uh, the whole divorce stuff. And, and then you see him at the Rams game. And then next thing, you know, it gets announced he's going to do the Super Bowl, and 
And, you know, it's definitely been in the lab, man. So it's good to see Dre making music. Uh, what were your thoughts on the EP? Uh, I thought it was dope, man. Uh, six songs. Uh, and I really didn't feel like any song on here was bad. Just I like some more than others. Mm-hmm. Uh, ET, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Highlights for me are ETA featuring Snoop, Anderson, Pack, and Buster Rhymes. Diamond Life, or I'm sorry, Diamond Mind. Mm-hmm. Diamond Life was the track from the Snoop album. I'm sorry. Diamond Mind mm-hmm. featuring Nipsey Hussle and Ty Dolla Sign. Yeah. Very dope as well. Uh, the Scenic Group with Rick Ross and Anderson Pack. Uh, Rick Ross and Dr. Dre was the collab that I never knew I needed. Fire. Yeah. Straight fire. Like, never knew I needed it. Was so glad after I heard it. And uh, gospel. Uh, yeah. M. Yeah. This is what we want to hear from you, bro. This is what we want to hear from you, bro. M killed it. Yeah. It felt like classic M and Dre. I'm like honestly after that, I, I want to hear an uh, uh, M album produced by Dre. Like this is what we need, mm. you know. And I honestly feel like that would be a great move for M. Yeah. Now that's just personal opinion, mm. but I feel like that would be a great move for him. I thought that track, which very easily could have gotten uh, and and when I say this, it's not no shade or anything like this, considering that it wasn't the same type of vibe as the other track. This was really more of a kind of rapping rapping track. Mm-hmm. I feel like that track could have easily got overshadowed because of the content. Mm-hmm. That track was incredible. Easily yeah. one of the best on the album. So, yeah. M, if you see this, this is what we want to hear from you, bro. I also enjoy M's verse a lot on, on Grip's album. I thought that one was like overshadowed, but it was incredible. Um, yeah, man. I mean, you basically covered all the songs that I enjoy. I just add Falling Up. I thought Falling Up was a really good record. I like the beat on that a lot. That kind of puts me in, uh, okay, that's Dre right there. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed gospel a lot, you know, M snap. And I'll say this too, Mike, when you listen to, to Dre's rapping, could you kind of get a vibe that some of his verses were penned by the game? You know, I honestly didn't pay attention. Like I just knew he sounded, I just knew he sounded well. Yeah. I really didn't uh, delve into it like that though. But I'm when I go back and listen to it again, I will keep that in mind. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, Game and Kendrick were not featured on here, but I think their pen uh, probably uh, had something to do with Dre's verses for sure. And, and, and uh, who knows? Maybe M wrote some and DLC as well. Who knows, honestly? Yeah. But I, I thought he sounded great on every track. Yeah. Oh, man. Also, that gospel record, I was happy to hear the DLC. I mean, I haven't heard him on something in a long time. I know he writes for Dre, but it was good to uh, see him. Get, get some shine as well hey. yeah so who knows man i mean i remember that when that picture had came out of m uh dr dre the doc and the doc's daughter who knows maybe at that time they were working on either this song or there was some discussion going on about that super bowl performance but it was good to see everything come around full circle yeah for sure man last but not least bro Nas, man Man, he came out of nowhere, bro, and dropped this Magic album. I remember him doing an interview with Ebro, and they had talked about would there be a, a third collaborative album with him and, and Hit Boy. And, man, he came out of nowhere, man, dropped this surprise album. And there was one line on one of the songs. He talked about King's Disease 3. So mm-hmm. Nas and Hit Boy, man, they got something, man. And I remember Nas had said something also on another record. I think it's the one with... um with uh asap rocky that him and um hit boy are, are the new game star so it was dope man i mean bro i don't know man I, I was i've listened to the album like two or three times already i'm trying to think like dang I, this may be better than king's disease too man like it's <laughs> it's incredible man it's like like 94 well i ain't gonna say 94 but maybe 96 type Nas, man he's snapping on here so 
uh, standout tracks for me. I like all of them, but I'll highlight the ones I really, really like. Speechless is, is incredible. Meet Joe Black. Oh, my goodness, man. Like, the the hook is crazy. The flow is crazy. He got ridiculous on that. 4016 Building. I think my favorite song is probably Hollywood Gangster. Like, he's just snapping and spassing on that. Uh, woo for children incredible like the sample the that's Nas right there man he's just in pocket he sounded really good on it and dedicated I thought was good as well I mean Nas and Hit Boy man they really got that that formula and science down to a T and I want to just see those guys just continue to make music together man they, they, they got a good partnership going right yeah um don't really have a whole lot to add. Uh, I thought the album was incredible. Uh, nine tracks, no skips. Right. I love. I liked every single song on here. But uh, the well, once again, just like I said, I like some songs more than others. Yeah. So my standouts would be Speechless, uh, Meet Joe Black, as you said. Mm. I really enjoy Ugly. Ugly was fire mm. to me. Mm. And uh, like you said, Woo for the Children, man. That mm-hmm. track's incredible. Mm-hmm. That track's incredible. Yeah. Uh, White Todd uh, featuring ASAP and Primo, crazy uh, and dedicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I enjoyed the majority of this album, as you see. Uh, you know, wasn't that was a very uh, pleasant surprise from Nas and Hit Boy. So shout out to them for that because I definitely wasn't expecting it. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good, man. And uh, that that woo for children, I thought of you because I, I know you like sample type tracks or whatever. But yeah, it, it was good, man. I mean, and Hit Boy is showing, man, like his versatility. He's also showing that you know he don't have to be in the studio with somebody for three years to make a good album. Like, man, they knocking out music fast and and just. But it's not. It doesn't sound rushed. Like it sounds good, and it, it just like it's. It's chemistry, you know. Well, I mean, Nas is in his bag right now, lyrically. Yeah, and uh, I think Hit Boy is in his bag production-wise. So I think it just makes for a nice, uh, you know, pairing. Honestly, right. and you know, we've seen it three times now: King's Disease One and Two, and and now here with Magic. So yeah, you know, who knows what King's Disease Three is gonna is gonna sound like? Facts. Shout out to both of them. Yeah, man. All right, bro. So we got new music of the week. So we got Currency back with Pilot Talk 4. I'm definitely looking forward to this one. I hope uh, this is the project. I thought the previous one, the EP he put out, but uh, maybe this is going to be the one that has some of the production from JD on it. But I'm looking forward to this one. I know it's out already and we're going to cover it on the next show. So what are your thoughts about Currency being back? Uh, what's this, his third one this year now? Yeah, man, he's been, like, back-to-back. Uh, Currency might as well join Griselda as much as he dropped the album. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, hey, uh, Marlon Craft, too. Yeah, yeah thanks. But, um, yeah, I've been mean, looking forward to hearing it. Uh, as I just stated a few minutes ago, big Currency fan. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I look forward to what's probably going to be another top project or a top level project from him this year. So yeah. Yeah, man. Uh next up we got the Alchemist with Cycles original score EP. I look forward to checking this one out for sure with his yeah, yeah. participation with uh Alfredo and Bo Jackson and you know we can go the list we can go down the list of all the classic stuff that the Alchemist does, man, but he's definitely in his bag too. Yeah, definitely. Can't wait to See what that sounds like. Glad that you mentioned that too. We definitely uh need to review that for the next part. So yeah, shout out to Alchemist and look forward to hearing that one too. Yeah. All right, man. Next up we got Pac-Man, the gunman, 6325. I've never even heard of this guy, but I look forward to uh checking out the project. Yeah, um, I heard the uh, the track City Love featuring Nipsey and uh Casey Khalil. I thought it was cool. Uh, you know, kind of a West Coast vibe. You know, I'm not sure if he's uh affiliated with uh some of 
Nipsey people. Uh, I think Jay Stone is one of his uh, people. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he's affiliated with them or not, but uh, you know the the track sounded uh, the track that I heard sounded dope and a uh, cool track. I enjoyed it, so you yeah. know, forward to seeing what he comes with too. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Next up, we got NBA Young Boy with Emo Rockstar. I got a chance to check out the video. I thought the video was cool, man. I like um, just his whole swagger in it and. You know, he's basically just smoking, throwing up money, just doing rock star stuff. But I, I thought it was a cool video. Yeah, I thought the video was cool, too. Uh, trending number two on YouTube when I saw it. Not necessarily my favorite song by Young Boy, mm -hmm. but the video was cool, and it served the purpose of the track. So, you know, that was cool. Yeah. All right, man. Next up, we got Benny the Butcher, Mr. Pyrex. What were your thoughts on this one? Fire like Benny is Benny. How many times have we talked about Benny on this part? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It's fire. Uh, you know, I really don't think them Grizzell the Cats miss very often, if they miss at all. So, yeah, shout out to Benny. I thought the track was dope. Yeah, man, the video was cool. Uh, I like seeing West Side with the little three-peat um, jacket at the end, and, you know, the bars were, were dope, and I don't know if this is like affiliated with his upcoming Def Jam project, but yeah, it's good to see him. You can tell he's just getting more and more comfortable as an artist. And, and, uh, and that's another thing too. Like the music was kind of different, you know, it's not the traditional samples for them. So those guys are really just kind of elevating and showing that they can be versatile with everything. Hey. All right, man. Next up, we got Lil Dicky with, we good from the Dave show. What were your thoughts on this track? Uh, <clears throat> you know, um, Lil Dicky can rap. Let me start by saying this. Lil Dicky can definitely rap. Am I a fan of um, maybe more comedic style rap or uh, rap that's more... Uh, Aim towards uh, being funny, not necessarily. Uh, I thought the song was okay. Mm -hmm. I've heard songs from him that I like a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, one of my favorite songs uh, that was just uh, introduced to me not too long ago was a song that he has with Snoop Dogg that I thought was incredible. Yeah. Like that song is really fire mm -hmm. and just shows how great he can rap. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's also a song for a show, so right. I don't take much stock in that mm -hmm. considering that it didn't appear to be like a single or right, something that right. he, it's a it's a song for a show yeah. so you know for what it was i thought it was okay but uh i yeah. i definitely there's definitely a few little dicky songs that i like more yeah yeah i thought the same thing it was it was cool i mean uh i didn't know what to expect but yeah it was okay all right, man. Next up, we got Mary J. Blige, Amazing, featuring DJ Khaled. I thought the song was cool. Um, I guess the only thing, I'm not going to say that disappointed me, was just she's Mary J. Blige. She's a legend. She can do anything that she wants to do. And I just kind of felt like a little bit like, like the music was kind of like for today's type of, you know, flow or type of vibe or whatever and it, it was fine and the video was really good but i just want her just to she's a legend you know what i'm saying she's always been the voice of those hurting and and who knows maybe she's at like at a different place right now in her life you know acting and she's going through a divorce herself so maybe she just wanted to do something kind of different or whatever but i mean just for me personally though i just kind of I don't want her to confine to today's music. I mean, just do you, your Mary J. Blige. I mean, I well, I'm one hundred percent contrary. I liked it. Mm. Uh, I thought it was dope. Uh, trending number twenty seven at the time when I saw it. Uh, as you said, DJ Khaled on the production, and like I kind of like when Mary raps. Like mm. I know at one point in time she had kind of like a little rapper persona or whatever, mm. and I loved that. I thought it was dope. Hmm. so and that's just my personal opinion but uh i kind of like when she kind of has uh trap or uh, tracks that kind of sound like they're more equipped for rappers like one of my um 
one example of that that comes to mind specifically is family affair. Whenever I hear that beat, I just think, oh, I could hear like this rapper on it or that rapper on it, just kill that track. But I mean, she did her thing with it. And that was a huge song. So uh, yeah, I liked it. I liked what Mary did. And, uh, you know, I, I like when she kind of has, you know, when she's not necessarily, like you said, singing, you know, about pain and different things like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But I like that she kind of switched it up and did something different. So I thought it was cool. Yeah. I enjoyed that song Thriving that she did with Nas. Uh, I don't feel like that song got enough attention that it should have got. But as far as her acting, man, she's really like, man, like I remember a movie she did with, um, I want to say it was Angela Bassett. And I think she played Martin Luther King's wife and Angela Bassett played, maybe it was the opposite. One of them played Malcolm's wife. One of them played um, Martin's wife and they, met up and became friends whatever and, and supported each other in the movie and i was like man she's got acting chops and then uh kind of like a kind of like a sci-fi thing she did called body cam so i mean mary is definitely you know getting more and more versatile with her acting and she's incredible but again i'm not dissing the song i thought the song was good i just won't but i don't know if, if this is like the first single for an upcoming project then i'm sure she'll kind of blend it and you get some of what you want from her, and then she'll kind of make some songs for today's age as well. So I get what she's doing. Yeah, and I mean, um, to kind of piggyback on what you were saying about her acting, uh, I haven't seen either of those movies, but I can tell you uh, from personal experience watching her on Power, I feel like she has definitely improved her. I feel like she's getting well, I don't want to say she's getting better. I feel like we're seeing her growth as an actress. Yeah. So, yeah. Shout yeah. out to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Mary, man. She She's a legend. And she's definitely somebody that nobody probably wants to see in a versus. <laughs> I'll say that. Big yeah. fact. Yeah. All right, man. Next up, we got Conway the Machine. Can't be featuring A Boogie with the hoodie and Jeremiah. Bro, let me say this, man. He's starting to learn that sometimes less is more because he can spaz on song, but you can tell here he's making a song. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not trying to be lyrical miracle. He's not trying to like overbar you to death, even though he does that incredible, but he, this is like a song and then the single. And so I can see them really starting to kind of pick up some of those concepts now that, yeah, we make the street stuff, but now we're about to start hitting y'all with the radio joint. So I thought it was good. Um, I'm familiar, I'm very familiar with the sample that he used. Good song, mm -hmm. good song. Yeah, like you said, uh, the total sample uh, with Biggie on that track. I think the song was Can't You See. Uh, as you said, A Boogie uh, is on this as well. Um, and and what you're saying about the whole list is more things. I, I kind of agree with you, but um, what I will say that's kind of slightly different is I feel like, you know, different tracks call for different measures. And I feel like he was well aware of the fact that, to kind of piggyback on what you were saying now, I feel like he was aware of the fact that this was not a track that he needed to be lyrical miracle let me you know let the track do its thing let me do my thing with the track and let's form something nice together right and i feel like he did that yeah. and same uh and jeremiah is dope mm -hmm. I mean, jeremiah's always got dope food. oh yeah so, oh yeah oh yeah you know fire yeah and another example of that too is what he did on donda like that was probably just eight bars yeah you know what i'm saying but he said everything <laughs> within them eight bars yeah. So that's why I was just giving them, you know, a shout out for that is like elevating as an artist, learning that, okay, hey, I don't have to always have 32 bars or whatever. Like I can say what I need to say if the song requires me to do it in a shorter amount of time or whatever. Because, you know, other thing too is, you know, I, I've always thought about it when you always have all these legendary verses that people enjoy. Obviously, when you go out and perform, 
that's a lot to like remember and 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 have in pocket and stuff like that so i mean that's just um and then too like the more legendary verses that you do uh, and, and some people embrace that type of pressure as well. People are going to expect more from that, for, you know, from you for that or whatever. And I feel like sometimes that's what M faces, you know, like, you know, yep. like, especially as core fans, they want another verse that's 60 bars and, and 10 flows on it or whatever. And, you know, that's, that's a lot of pressure, you know, to always have to deliver that or try to come close to it because, that's the standard that people are going to always try to hold you to. And, and I'm actually glad you said that because that's honestly my overall point in everything that I've, of all my criticisms of Eminem is sometimes the track doesn't call for, you know, super high speed rapping. Sometimes you just do something different on the track. And my thing, I think one of my, main examples that I used for that was that track with Fat Joe where he was doing the Mariah Disson and the Nick Cannon Lord Dissin. Above. Yeah, thank you, Lord Above. And it's like, you know, you didn't have to do that. You could have just rap, bro. But uh, you know, that once again still my personal opinion. I know a lot of people like that song. If Fat Joe didn't like the song, he wouldn't have put it out. Hmm. So, you know, it is what it is. But I just I just feel like he and maybe this is his own pressure that he puts on himself but you don't have to do that all the time you can just rap and and it can be good because you're a good rapper you ain't gotta go zero to 100 every track mm -hmm. but i'll give you one example though what you said okay that's you know obviously uh let's take something like kamikaze right so the ringer that's the opening song. And then obviously, so he was addressing all the criticism of people who didn't like uh, the previous album, Revival. So, okay, he sped rapped on that one, or not necessarily sped rap, but just, it was really long, like five minutes of just straight bars and rapping or whatever. And then Greatest, and then Lucky You with Joyner, he spazzed on. But I felt like after that, like normal, he didn't really do too much. Stepping Stone was kind of dedicated to D12. He didn't do too much. Not a like he spazzed on because obviously he was addressing um, MGK or whatever. But then the rest of the songs like Fall and Nice Guy and Good Guy, he didn't speak rap. So, you know, a lot of his albums that people are listening to him, he's not really doing that on like every song or whatever. So I think sometimes maybe it's for the features or just maybe if he's got, you know, 20 songs on the album. He may have six where he's doing that. But really, for the most part, a lot of his songs, he's not, like, doing the speed rap stuff. But the, the, the speed rap is not the overall point. The overall point is you can rap without having to take things to the extreme. Like, you know, whether it's, like, saying some crazy punchline that feels out of place, or like you said, doing the super fast robotic rap, or you don't have to do that. Like you, you're you're so good as an MC and as an artist, you don't have to feel the pressure to do that. Like you can just rap, bro, and people are still gonna accept it. But you know, and and like you said, maybe that's the pressure that he puts on himself. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I just you know, for yeah, me, yeah, I mean, it's probably just like a evolution thing for him because i feel like i will say this though what i will credit him for and this is what i appreciate i know some people may feel differently but i appreciate that m is always trying to work on different cadences and flows so i do yeah. appreciate that from him because some artists do something very well but they have not changed in 20 years and i understand if it works but to some extent, it's like, well, you know, like, hey, you know, and sometimes how I've always brought up like different movie analogies, whatever, like actors, a lot of times they're trying, some actors get stuck into the same stuff. And the perfect example for that, for me, would be somebody like Wesley Snipes. Like my, my wife is Asian and most Asian people who meet me and know that I'm her husband, I always tell me that, oh, you look like Wesley Snipes or whatever. So Wesley has always been like one of my favorite uh actors growing up or whatever and he's good i mean he's really good but i was really disappointed in his choices at one point because he got stuck in the whole f 
you know, like ex CIA agent set up by somebody or whatever. Okay, he did a brilliant job in U.S. Marshals, which was like a um, kind of like a sequel to The Fugitive with Harrison Ford. Okay, and then he did another one, and then before you know it, it was like ten movies like that. It's like, bro, you are like up there with some of the best. Like, you don't have to do those type of roles or whatever, even though it may pay the bills or whatever. You're too good of an actor to keep doing that. And I feel like some MCs who I don't want to name because I don't want to offend nobody, but it's like, but some, some people are really, really good, but they have not changed at all. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, so I do like people that's willing to take risk, even if the movie may flop or may, may take people a while to appreciate it. And that's the thing about art. People may not like something at first, but then come back to appreciate it or whatever. So I think as an actor, as an artist, as a, a football player or whatever, LeBron may add something to his game that he never had before, or Tom Brady may add something to his arsenal or whatever. I think it's always good just to elevate and not get redundant in doing the same thing. Yeah, I feel that. And just to um, just to address what you just said real quick. Um, and once again, because it's not a problem with fast rap. I mean, right. he rap fast on not a light. It was fire. Right. You know, and it's not a problem with him rapping fast. But just because you rap fast doesn't make it good. You know what I'm saying? And so I just I just want him to to understand that he don't have to go balls to the wall on every track. You can just rap good, bro, and we'll appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to pull lyrical acrobatics on every track. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But but that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, but, yeah I felt like Nas did that on the Magic album. Like, he kind of had his moments where he's fast, and he had some moments where he didn't really – because, you know, you listen to King's Disease 1 and 2. I mean, we know Nas can do, you know, like, we you, know, know he he, you know, he doesn't have, he really doesn't rap that slow or whatever, but he just, you know, I guess working with Hit Boy, he's kind of gotten in pocket where he's just more comfortable of, uh, you know, just doing different stuff on the track or whatever. Now, me as a big Eminem fan and, and as a stan, I've always wanted to hear Eminem and Pharrell do something. So I would like to see him as one of his biggest fans, maybe branch out and kind of work with some other producers. Not necessarily like your, I mean, hell, why not Hit Boy? Or why not, you know, Timberland or, or Kanye or somebody? I love to see him kind of get some different production for sure. I mean, not that I have a problem with his production like some people do, but just try something different. I feel it. Yeah. I feel it. Did we uh did we cover the Horseman album? No, we didn't. Okay. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, and do that. Okay, so the Horseman, Last Rod, for those who don't know, the Horseman consists of Cannabis, Killer Priest, Corrupt, Riot Cast. That's all the members, right? Yep. Okay. And um this is uh basically their last album as a group. Uh they were a group during what the 90s so uh you know this is basically their uh farewell as an album um very lyrical guys all of these guys so if you're not into lyrical hip-hop it's probably not gonna be for you but um highlights for me were centaurs morticians one second featuring hus uh kingpin Love and War featuring Kia Jeffrey, mm -hmm. Believer, and Burger King. Yeah. And uh, I thought Raz Cass for me stood out the most on this album. Uh, I, but I'm, I've always kind of liked Raz Cass. I think he, uh, in a lot of ways, I think Raz Cass was Eminem before Eminem, but that's a whole different discussion. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, I, I thought the album was cool. I enjoyed, uh, most of their verses, Corrupt, I thought was really special on, yeah. uh, which track was that? Believer, I think? Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was really special on that track specifically. Um, or maybe it was One Second. No, it was One Second. Yeah, I thought his verse on One Second was just special. Like, that's the, that it reminded me of why I like Corrupt in the first place. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, great album. Yeah I, yeah, I enjoyed it too, man. Uh, Burger King, um, 
I thought False Prophets was good. Uh, Last Ride champion but yeah man i missed some, some good songs on there so definitely rapidly rap album for sure but for me um yeah i i enjoy um i enjoy um what rascast did as well but i think corrupt stood out for me it's like man corrupt was just snapping man but it, it, it was incredible man it was incredible yeah it was a great album i enjoyed it yeah uh, last but not least, man, for our new music before we transition is uh, Tory Lanez with Enchanted Waterfall. Saw the music video, um, kind of put me in the whole uh, still Michael Jackson type of thing or whatever from Thriller. Uh, dope, though. I, I enjoyed it. Like, I enjoyed that song a lot. Yeah, bro, I like this. Uh, this probably is the best song that I've heard Um from the R&B album or the 80s album, we'll call it. Uh, I listened to it earlier this morning. Uh, there was a, quite a few tracks I thought that stood out. Uh, as you said, you get the MJ vibes and the video thriller vibes and all of that kind of stuff. Um, the track to me, oddly enough, sounds uh, very reminiscent of uh, George Michael's Careless Whisper. Hmm. I don't know if you heard that or not, but if you listen to it again, just the melody and different things and and that seems to be a recurring theme on that album uh there was one song i know that sounded almost identical to phil collins easy lover mm -hmm. there was another song that uh sounded almost identical to madonna in the groove or into the groove so like you know maybe that's just what he's trying to do on this but uh we're look, talking look at mike about dropping jewels <laughs> i'm just saying yeah maybe that's what he's trying to do on this uh <laughs> yeah but, uh, you know, we'll talk more about that in the uh, future. Maybe we'll cover that one on the next pod as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll check it out. I didn't know he had an album out, so I'll check it out. Not surprising, though. He puts out a lot of music, too. I did enjoy yeah, I did. the uh, – he put out, like, an EP in the summer. I liked it a lot. It's, like, five yeah, songs on it. Like, Birthday, I think, was the song I liked. It was crazy. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the EP. I think it's, like, We Outside. Or yeah, uh -huh. yep, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, incredible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, man, before we uh, transition to our artist spotlight, so I saw some fans calling for a versus saying, will the real Carter stand up as far as a versus with Jay-Z and Lil Wayne? So what What are your thoughts on this? I'm, uh, I, I'm just asking, Mike. I'm just asking. No, I'm not mad. I'm just... <laughs> Uh, man. Um, I mean, because Lil Wayne does got, he's got a heavy catalog. We can't take look, that from him. Wayne is a legend, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think I spoke on this before on the pod. There's a, a significant amount of people out there who think Wayne has a legitimate case at being the best rapper alive or in some people's eyes all time, mm. you know, and that's cool. Uh, I just think it's difficult uh, when you're dealing with somebody like Jay in a versus type scenario. I saw um, Ninth Wonder made a post uh, and was talking about the songs that Jay could do. And he was like, so, okay, what if he comes out with Kanye and does Niggas in Paris? And then he comes out with Beyonce and does Crazy in Love. And then he brings Freeway and Beans out and they do uh, What We Do Is Wrong. And then he brings you know what I'm saying, for real out, for real out, and they do uh, give it to me, and then right after that, they do excuse me, miss. It's like, those are hard songs to to compete with, and that ain't to say that Wayne don't have a catalog, that ain't yeah. to say that Wayne ain't talented, mm -hmm. but I just have to see, because you know, yeah. that Well, I mean, what well, Wayne does Lollipop, Wayne does the a Millie, he's got the song with Destiny's Child, I mean, Wayne's been I mean, Wayne could hell, I mean, this is even take Jay-Z out of the equation. Wayne's features for a long time was ridiculous. This so Wayne got mixtape stuff. He could bring probably half the people he's done features with. Wayne would be a tough opponent for a lot of people. I mean, now that I think about it, I'm not saying that, I mean, obviously, you know, I'll probably have Jay-Z ranked higher on my all-time list than Lil Wayne, but, ooh. 
Why you know they ain't no walk in the park. You know they ain't gonna be nobody. You just gonna get out of here and you know just use your bravado. Wayne would be like a hard guy to take down. I think. I mean, I definitely think Wayne can hold his own. I just question, you know, the amount of star power that's going to be on the stage in the scenario that Jay did something like what Ninth Wonder was talking about. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Ninth Wonder for that. But, um, you know, I, I just the amount of star power that's on stage. Then you bring Mary J. Blige out for Can't Knock the Hustle. And, you know, then you bring Bun B out for a big pimping. You know, like, bro, I mean, just, I don't know. I, I don't know, bro. Yeah. I, I, that's a tough matchup for anybody. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, uh, but again, you know, Wayne has like worked with so many people, so it's like, you know, he could bring out, it, you know, anybody. You know what I'm saying? From, you know, he's got the joint with Kanye and and Eminem and Birdman okay. and Cash Money and Nicki and Drake. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that would be. The more I think about it, that would be huge. I mean, I know probably from a personal standpoint, I would love to see him and Nas do it, but I've heard some people say Nas is not interested in doing a versus. So let's just say hypothetically, if Nas chose not to do it, I think Wayne would probably be uh, a good opponent because, you know, Kanye said on Drink Champs that he wouldn't do one against uh, Jay-Z. So that might be the one because I will say this, though. I think with Magic coming out and your three KDs, how some J fans feel like he would just wash Nas. I mean, I don't feel that way at all anyway, but man, Nas is like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like he really kind of separating himself a little bit, man, because his catalog is getting deeper and deeper, man. And it's getting like really good. I've always enjoyed probably every Nas album, like even the ones that people didn't like, like Nostradamus or Streets Disciple, I, I enjoy those albums too, but Nas that catalog is getting thick, man. And it's like really getting, you know, strong. I mean, Nas definitely has a great catalog, but I think, you know, I think versus scenarios are in most cases popularity contests. And I think if it comes down to, you know, the notoriety around the song in a lot of cases, just off the notoriety that goes along with some of those songs, it would be difficult for a cer- for certain people to to uh, compete with that. Hmm. And that's yeah. just my personal opinion. I feel you. I feel you. But I will say, I, I do think, you know, performance plays a big part because think about it like, you know, like last year, for example, I didn't think the Phoenix Suns had any chance of beating the, the Lakers, but they did. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you can be this top dog or whatever but there's a lot of young guns coming and you got to stay sharp because if not i mean jay is a legend but you get out there and you have an off night or whatever the wayne might wash you or something you know what i'm saying so you got to pick the right songs you gotta be oh, sharp or whatever you know this is jay-z though i understand bro. for this I'm, I'm just saying but if you don't perform you get up there and forget a song or anything i mean a shock of Khan was up there you know what i'm saying so it was like Anything can go wrong, you know. That's Shaka, though. And that ain't no lock on Shaka. I love Shaka. But I'm just saying, this is Jay-Z. If Jay's going to even entertain that, he's going to be prepared. I understand. I'm not saying he's not. I mean, I definitely know he wouldn't get up there and and not be sharp. You know what I'm saying? But there have been, you know, times where, you know, him and and other people have got up there and forgot lyrics and things that nature. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man, we'll close it out, man, with Artist Spotlight with Dreezy. So tell us about it, man. Dreezy, uh, Big Dree. Okay, so um, Dreezy is an American singer, rapper, songwriter, and actress. Uh, hails from south side of Chicago, Illinois. And just uh, some brief information on her, because uh, there's not like an abundance of information out there on her. Um, Dreezy got into music basically as a form of a kind of escapism, just uh, dealing with some of the things that she was facing in her community. Uh, If I'm not mistaken, I think she was also, uh, 
she ends up having to move a lot because of uh, some different things that were going on in her life. I don't want to get into that because the truth is I don't know the logistics. But uh, I know she spoke on, or I know she said that music uh, was a way of her just kind of helping her deal with the realities of her life. So I thought that that was dope, you know, and fine arts and music are, you know, in a lot of ways help people and be, can be ways of uh, escapism and different things like that. But uh, so she started with uh, poetry, writing, and drifted towards singing around the age of 10. Uh, she's always, you know, been, as I said, been influenced and interested in music. But around the age of 14 was when she decided she wanted to uh, try to, or was interested in becoming a rapper. Um, she cites J. Cole and Lil Wayne as her biggest music influences and saying that Lil Wayne is her favorite rapper of all time. So we we just saw that come full circle. Um, <laughs> uh, so coming up in Chicago, there's a lot of artists in Chicago, obviously. Uh, native Chicago, Chicago rapper Sasha Gohard uh, ended up doing a song with Dreezy where... Uh, Dreezy made a guest appearance on her song, and the song was called I Ain't No Hitter in 2012. Uh, she later released a song with the fellow Chicago or fellow rapper um, Lil Durk called Ghost. And in February 2013, she did a collaborative mixtape with Chicago rapper Mikey Dollars entitled Business and Pleasure. In 2014, she released her first solo mixtape entitled Hit So through AOE Music. I've heard the uh, project, thought it was very dope, uh, along with music, or uh, along with the song, I'm sorry, which features a uh, guest verse from Chicago rapper Common on the track called No Good. This was very dope to me, and obviously uh, one of the chances for her to really get some mainstream exposure. So in April of 2014, she released a remix of the Nicki Minaj and Lil Herb song, Chirac, which received a lot of attention. Many uh, fans saying that it was better than Nicki's version. The remix uh, later earned her a second uh, track with Common, because after hearing this, uh, she ended up doing the collab with Common on his 10th album, Nobody Smiling. In 2014, she was named the Princess of Chicago Rap by Noisy or via Vice uh, Magazine. And on December or in December of 2014, it was announced that she was uh, she signed a recording contract with Interscope Records. Now, in July of 2015, she released her debut EP called "Call It What You Want." December 25th of 2015, same year, she re released another EP entitled From Now On, and this was a uh, digital streaming, uh, this one was to digital retailers and streaming via Interscope Records. And she released her debut album, uh, No Hard Feelings, which was released July 15th of 2016. She also, in 2018, performed at Rolling Loud. And in 2019, she appeared in the Netflix movie Beat as Queen Cabrini and also followed up her 2016 release with her sophomore album, Big Dreams, in 2019. So uh, she's collabed with some of everybody, uh, Dave Loaf, Jeremiah, as I said, Little Dirk, uh, Sasha Gohard, Katie Got Bands, uh, Gucci Mane on the track We Gonna Ride. <clears throat> Some of the other collaborations she has that are notable. Uh, obviously, the T-Pain record, Close to You, which did very well on the track. Uh, Spaz was a, uh, I'm sorry, not Spaz, Spar, featuring uh, Black and Kodak Black. Another song that I personally enjoy very much. Uh, P B track. Uh, she's done tracks with P P and B Rock, Two Chains. Uh, she had the Cash Dolls uh, track, Chanel Fly. Uh, she's even done tracks with Kiki Palmer, YFN, and Lucci. And she was featured on the uh, Dreamville Revenge of the Dreamers three album 
on the track got me. And I remember Ari Lennox uh, when the Dreamville sessions were going on saying that she heard Dreezy's verse and how fire it was and how Dreezy was one of her favorite rappers at the time. So uh, Dreezy definitely, you know, a talented lyricist. She can sing as well. Great singer. That T-Pain song, Close to You, is fire. She also had the Body song with Jeremiah, which did very well on the track. Uh, or charts, I'm sorry. Uh, so she can sing. She can rap. She's an actress. Uh, multi-talented. And, you know, just doing her thing. And uh, I just really look forward to seeing more from her, seeing uh, what she has in store. Uh, it's been about two years now since she dropped her last project, so maybe we'll get something from her in 2022. But uh, definitely worth every, definitely worth the listen. And uh, if you're looking for some tracks to maybe give you a feel or start you out, I'll definitely check out the T-Pain track, Close to You, the Body track featuring Jeremiah, the Spar track featuring Kodak Black and, uh, and Black. And then... Uh, I think the track from the Revenge of the Dreamers was called You Got Me, maybe? Let me check to make sure. Got Me, okay? Yeah, I would check that out as well. And that features Ari Lennox, Oldman, Ty Dolla Sign, and obviously Breezy. So, yeah, shout out to Breezy, dope artist, doing her thing from Chicago. And I look and I look forward to hearing more dope music from her. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, man, Mike, give everybody your social media information. Yeah, M1C uh, underscore CH3CK. The I is a one, the E is a three, underscore in the middle, that simple. All right, and you can look me up on Facebook. Look for Terrence Hill. Also, while you're there, be sure to like our page, the Sleeping Giants podcast. We got a lot of great content up on there, so check that out. My Instagram is Terrence Hill the Great. That's one word. Again, Taryn Till the Great on Instagram. My YouTube is Terrence Hill Music. That's all one word. Again, Terrence Hill Music. And also while you're on YouTube, be sure to like our page, Double ETV Media. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to this week of Terrence and Mike, the Sleeping Giants podcast. If the next episode doesn't air before the new year, we want to wish you guys a happy new year. And happy holidays. To those people who don't celebrate Christmas and different things like that, uh, we know a lot of different backgrounds and uh, and things like that out there. So happy holidays to all of y'all and from the Sleeping Giants podcast. That's right. All right, y'all take care.